This is a reminder to all of my Latinas that it's time to stop thinking que nada más tenemos un negocito. Thanks to QuickBooks for sponsoring today's video. Before we begin today's episode, quiero compartir contigo tres cambios de mentalidad que yo hice para crecer mi negocio Sweet Soul a lo que es hoy. Primeramente, empecé a pensar estratégicamente, no solamente tácticamente. This is when we started using QuickBooks because I was looking for a software that I was able to manage all of the expenses in my business and also automate routine tasks that I really don't like to do, which just allowed me to do what I do best, show up on my podcast, create content, teach meditation, and QuickBooks allows me to do all of those things for my business all in one place. The next growth business mentality that I adopted was definitely all about adapting a mentality of a student and always seeking growth. And the last mentality that really helped my business grow was delegation and building a team. I used to be one of those people that always wanted to do everything herself because I just thought it would be easier because I know what I want done. I got to a point where I couldn't grow as a business owner and content creator handling everything on my own. So learning how to let go of responsibility and also letting people do what they do best. And then you can focus on what you're incredibly talented to do. But it is quite impossible to grow your business if you're trying to handle absolutely every single thing. Así es que regístrate para obtener 50% de descuento en tus primeros tres meses. Welcome back to the episode, my beautiful ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Today's episode is going to be all about wellness habits that are going to change your life. But before we get started, I do want to say that we have a new retreat that I just announced this week. Our next retreat is in July 2025, and we are going to none other than Bali and in Indonesia. And this is literally a dream come true destination because Bali is so far away that I always thought, yeah, I'm not really going to make it out to Bali. I'm never really going to make it out to India. It's just like, how am I going to get there, right? Come to find out the stars have aligned and now we have a retreat happening in Bali. How incredible is this? The whole experience is going to be quite magical. Of course, I'm going to be there teaching meditation, especially if you want to deepen your meditation practice and take it to the next level. We're also going to have sound healing, encounters with healers from Bali, herbal medicine workshops, drinks at the Pomegranate Cafe. We're going to have water purification ceremonies and purity cleanses. And we're going to be right in the middle of like all of these ancient temples. And it's just going to be really incredible, beautiful, meaning, meaningful, and a great time for self-discovery. So if you ever feel the need to go somewhere far away to reconnect with yourself, definitely check out our retreat July 2025 happening. So I will leave the link down in the description box so you guys can sign up to the mailing list. So you are the first to get your hands on the early bird discount and so you can check out the itinerary. It's amazing. And I can't wait to see you in paradise. And as you guys know, I am enrolled in integrative nutrition. So I have been learning so much That's why I'm so excited to be here with you guys because I'm like, I need to share this knowledge with my people because this is exactly what I want to do. So starting with number one, sunbathing. Who talks about sunbathing? I'm sure if you Google sunbathing, you're going to have a lot of information on that. But like, I never hear people talk about sunbathing and the incredible benefits of going out into the sun, putting your hands up into the universe and just letting the solar energy penetrate into your body and naturally produce vitamin D right? Vitamin D is incredible for your bones, your overall health. And as we know, we're trying to get to 80, 90, and 100 and still be mobile and flexible and independent. And it starts literally like, I wish this information was taught like when we were children. <sighs> Sunbathing is just incredible for your mental health also because it helps release serotonin in your body, which is just going to make you feel incredible. So if you're an anxious person or a person who manages depression or is dealing with depression, definitely look into stepping outside and getting some fresh vitamin D sun rays into your skin. It's going to help you feel incredible. If you find that your immune system is not as strong, get some vitamin D. You can get some supplements, of course, and you can also get vitamin D through certain foods like milk and fish, certain fishes, 
certain fish, not fishes, certain fish, but you can also just go outside and make and help your body produce that naturally. Here's a key tip though. This is very interesting when I found it. Don't want, you could actually wash it off. So the last thing you want to do after sunbathing is going inside of the house because you're so hot and sweaty. And then you take a bar of soap and you get in the shower and you wash yourself. You will literally wash off the vitamin D. So you want it to Give it plenty of time for it to actually become one with your body. Make sure that you're not doing too much time out in the sun because that's when skin rashes, boils, blisters, even um, sunburn, even skin cancers can start to develop from too much sun on the skin. So we want to be very mindful of how much time we are spending outside and always being very careful about making sure that our body is fully covered in sunscreen. Anything that is not covered by clothing, make sure that your lips, the ears, your neck, your body, right? We tend to focus a lot on the face just when it comes to sunscreen, but making sure the back of your hands, especially if you don't want to get sunspots in the back of your hands, uh, making sure all of that is covered. And of course, make sure you're hydrated grab yourself a water bottle, bottle, take it outside with you. And also if you are pregnant, um, this is probably not something that you want to participate in. Maybe five minutes could be good, but you have to be very careful if you are pregnant because you don't want to have any type of dehydration or um, overheating the body. Tip number two, grounding. How many of us have heard about grounding? Oh my gosh. I know that I've known about this for several years, but never really did a deep dive on grounding and in its and its positive effects on the body. Let's begin with what is grounding. Grounding is a therapeutic technique involving activities that reconnect you electrically to the earth. So I did buy myself some grounding mats. I practice yoga and I practice yoga on my yoga mat and then I put my grounding mat on top. And then I also sometimes sleep with my grounding mat under the under the mattress, not the mattress, but just when I go to bed. Um, but now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if I have to uncover it because I feel like you need skin to skin contact because it's actually quite uncomfortable to sleep on top of a grounding mat. So I got to look for something better. But um I do have to say that when I did use the grounding mat for the first time, I actually got sleep paralysis. And that was when I first had my son, Aaron, and I've never had sleep paralysis since then, thank God. But I used to get it all the time, but I really do believe it's like some demonic stuff. Not the grounding mat, but like sleep paralysis, right? Um, But anyways, so... I have two grounding mats. I am really interested in actually buying grounding shoes. Once I saw them, I was like, oh my gosh, they actually have grounding shoes because here's the thing. And this is the reason why grounding just really caught my attention so much more so now that I am on a wellness journey because we are one with nature. We often forget that. We feel like we're not even animals. We feel like we're some, you know, something, it's, you know, better than everything else in this world. We feel like we're so much better than everything. But in reality, we are just evolved humans. And the only thing that makes us different from animals is the fact that we have a brain that can think and is able to know that it's a conscious thing, right? And that's such a blessing because animals don't have that ability. My first ever experience with grounding where I saw the actual effect effects of this was several years ago I went hiking to this beautiful place in Malibu and they have this huge abandoned house from some actor a long time ago and like now you just have the ruins of that actor's house in there which is pretty cool to see the before and after but on the way to that house that those ruins there's an actual waterfall there and before you get to the waterfall there's like this really nice stream a river like just a stream of water and the water is so pure and so like cold and clean and I just had this feeling of wanting to put my feet into the water and so me and my son Isaac this is before I had Aaron we all were just kind of relaxing playing in the river I used to love playing in the river as a little kid it was one of my favorite things to do in the world and so I took my shoes off I put my feet in the really cold water and the rocks were so smooth and I you know also meditated on the rocks but I was just kind of like walking barefoot inside of the water, on top of the rocks for quite some time. I was really enjoying it and I felt so relaxed, not only because I was already hiking and having a beautiful experience, I was already in nature, 
But what really shook me to the core, and this is before I started a deep meditation practice, right? So I mentioned that I meditated in the rocks, but I was really more so just sitting there. I didn't really know too much about meditation, but I knew enough that like I wanted to start meditating, but it wasn't consistent at all. Anyways, so after that, I go and do my thing. I go back home for a whole week, for a whole week. I'm telling you, I felt, and this is the word I'm going to use because this is literally what describes what I felt. I felt blissful. I've never in my life felt blissful up until that point for simply reconnecting, recalibrating myself energetically to the earth, to the water. It was one of the most beautiful experiences. And I was like, wow, this is what mother nature actually does to us. We've been so disconnected. We've been so disconnected from earth and we feel out of balance and we suffer from so many different ailments and illnesses and autoimmune diseases also because we have been so disconnected. Even walking around in daily life, we have this thick rubber on the bottom of our shoes that does not allow us to connect with earth. So here we are walking around, basically floating around and doing life completely ungrounded. To all my ladies also who suffer from PMS or if you're on your period, grounding is going to help you so much with that also. Again, one of the biggest things that people attribute, one of the biggest health benefits that people attribute to when it comes to grounding and this therapeutic modality is inflammation. And a lot of illnesses and diseases start with inflammation, right? Everything gets inflamed. Mental illness, depression, that's inflammation in the brain. So whenever we're thinking about our food, we also have to think, is this going to cause inflammation or take inflammation out of my body? So what is anti-inflammatory and what is going to cause inflammation? Grounding is anti-inflammatory. So if you have depression, if you have anxiety, if you're overstimulated, overworked, if you have chronic diseases, illnesses, if you have um, Anything that is causing inflammation within your body, I mean, this is only going to help, right? Just like meditation. Meditation, there's literally not one thing that meditation, like an illness, that meditation cannot help in any way. Not cure it, but help it. Oh, this is really great. Also, reduces blood viscosity, right? So the blood cells, if you look at some of the graphs and research papers that have been done on grounding, you see the cluster of blood cells before. They're all like really tight. And after 20, 30 minutes of grounding, they're all like free flowing. So it helps improve blood flow, which helps with, right, memory and concentration and focus. So it's just really incredible how simply putting our feet back into the ground is going to help us tremendously in our health. Now, how do you do it, right? I had a lot of questions because I was like, where do I stand? Do I just take my shoes off and go stand outside in the asphalt? No. No. It's actually very simple, but you want to avoid synthetic surfaces. So no asphalt, no rubber, you know, uh, you know, that rubber that's in the playgrounds, avoid anything synthetic. So the things that you do want to ground on, take your shoes off, go outside, go into the concrete, go into the, to the sand, go to the beach, go to the grass, go to the dirt, go to, go to the stone, right? If you have stone, you can ground on that 20, 30 minutes, just stand there. And you'll be grounding. Now, like I said, there's also things like if you live in a concrete jungle and you can't really, you know, be grounding anywhere. Maybe there's too many synthetic things outside. Maybe you live in an apartment. They have grounding mats. They have grounding pillowcases, grounding shoes. I am so wanting to get grounding shoes for my whole entire family. They're about $100. I saw them online and I was like, okay, they're kind of cute, you know, because some of the grounding materials are leather and some of them are like moccasins, moccasins, and those shoes are not cute. So I saw some other ones that are specifically made for grounding and I really want to try them out because I'm trying to walk around and be grounded at all times. I am doing anything that is going to help me just remain centered and grounded in life. Okay, guys, so our next health tip, detoxification and purification of our home environment. Every single thing that comes into our house is actually emitting toxic gases. This mic, the phone, of course, this wig, everything, guys, is like things are coming out. So to purify the air so we can live healthier lives, especially if you struggle with respiratory illnesses and symptoms, um, these are these tips are really going to help you out, but they're going to help anybody out. But asthma, anything like that, these this is really going to help you out, guys. Now, first thing I do when I wake up 
And first thing I want you to do when you wake up is open up all the doors. I don't care if flies come in. People are like, oh my gosh, flies. My husband's like flies. I will get rid of the flies after. But you want to let in... Oh my God, that felt incredible. I just took a deep breath. You want to let fresh air come into the house and you want to let stagnant, dry, bland air actually come out, right? So have you ever been in a big room full of people and then the air just feels so heavy? I actually went to the day one um, world convocation uh, of the Self-Realization Fellowship. It was in downtown LA, downtown LA at the Buena Venture Hotel. And I was so excited about it. And the I went to one of the last classes and it was like this whole room filled with hundreds of people. And I was all the way up to the front because I wanted good seats. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like having a hard time breathing because I'm like, like people were like this. And I just felt like, oh my God, the oxygen level here is not good. It's really unhealthy. Um, a lot of the healthy electricity even in the air is like sucked out and we're all like breathing in this recycled air like in an airplane and the air just felt like there was a lack of oxygen in the room and the air just felt like just thick right so that tends to happen because we're all like breathing in and breathing out so opening up the doors to let out all this stagnant dead air let it out and let fresh new air come in that's really important also make sure you're using HEPA filters in your house those filters are incredibly powerful for purifying the air in your home I mean they get like even the tiniest little minuscule microscopic element in the air floating around and they suck it up and they cleanse the air and especially have you ever noticed like if you walk into a room and there's all of these particles flying like if you ca catch a, uh, a ray of sunshine just kind of passing by you see all of these particles you're breathing those particles if you see a stream of particles and dust just floating the whole room is filled up with those particles. So getting the HEPA filters is going to suck all of that in. Those particles also have dust mites, actual living entities in them. And we're inhaling them. I feel like I just did that because I see some particles flying right now, guys. But we're literally breathing all of that stuff in. And if you have asthma, that's really bad for you. And we don't want these things in our system, right? And of course, we live in a very toxic environment, unfortunately, which is why I want to move out of the city, even though I love the city. But I'm looking for more of a country life, guys, because I'm trying to get that fresh air out there. But anyways, so make sure you guys get those HEPA filters. Um, be aware of volatile organic compounds also think about the mattresses and everything that that's emitting from the mattress especially if you have children and for yourself guys make sure those mattresses are organic the next thing is house plants add some more indoor house plants there's a research done by nasa and they actually did a whole research on which house plants they can use inside of the air shuttles because they want to make sure that, of course, everything inside of the air shuttle is plastic and it's emitting toxic, um, toxic chemicals out into the air and making it unhealthy for the astronauts. So they did a whole research and they have a list of like the top, um, I think, top 10 house plants that are really great for removing toxic chemicals and purifying the air, including aloe vera, which is one of my favorites. And I mean, some other ones that I have in my children's room, I actually got them one for each of those rooms. But houseplants, I mean, nature, come on, houseplants, they purify the air that we're living in. Now let's talk about meditation. That is my tip number four, guys, before I go into my last tip. Meditation. Oh my gosh, this is like the biggest wellness habit that I adapted into my life and why I became a meditation teacher because it is a profound practice, simple practice that anyone can practice. Anyone can practice. So one of the things that I want to touch on, um, I'm not going to touch on the spiritual aspects because I know that's not relatable to everybody, but I do want to touch on the stress. Stress is something that we all manage. Hopefully we learned how to manage stress well and we're not overwhelmed by it that we end up getting sick. Um, but if you do suffer from stress, which honestly we all do, we, if you exist in the world, you're, we're always going to have stress. It's something that's going to be a part of our lives forever. So the thing is, how are we going to react to stress and how are we going to live with the stress? Here is where meditation becomes the antidote to stress. When your body is stressed out, you go into fight or flight. 
And so that means that you begin to sweat. You're not able to have deep cleansing breaths because you're in fight or flight. So you're having like these short breaths that are happening. The stress hormone begins to get released into your body. Anti-aging hormones are also suppressed. So you, be, you start to age a lot faster also when you're stressed out, especially under pressure all the time, especially if it's chronic. We're no longer thinking about a saber-toothed tiger trying to kill us. We're thinking about, damn, that email really got me stressed out. A simple email can stress people the F out. Additionally, stress will block the naughty channels. And the naughty channels are, in yoga theory, this these really um, the, these channels that flow throughout the entire body that carry information like blood and oxygen and prana all over the body. And if you get a cut, for example, the naughty channel is going to send information into this finger that it needs to heal. So healing can take place. If you're stressed out, there's going to be blockages in these channels, which then means that your body is not going to be able to heal as it should because information is not being processed and carried like it needs to be, right? Okay, what's something else that happens under stress? Your mind gets constricted, right? Why does it get constricted? Because we need to focus on what is in front of us, the threat that is in front of us. That email, that text message is the threat. So your body is like, vroom. so now you can get easily agitated. You're not thinking logically or clearly anymore or rationally because you are focused on surviving. That is literally what your body is doing. And so you're not able to have compassion for people, expand your heart. You're not able to think clearly or see different ways of living life or different ways of solving this issue because your mind is constricted. So when you are in a meditative stage in your practice, what is happening is everything is completely the opposite of all the negative things that I just mentioned. So your body starts to relax. Information starts to flow internally in your body. You're releasing toxins from the body. So if you have an illness, meditation allows your body to actually do its job and heal you. When you're stressed out, the body can't heal you because, again, it's just trying to survive. So any chronic illness that we might potentially have. If we are in a meditative state, we're allowing the body to do its thing. And actually, it's even better. It's sometimes I read some research that has said that meditation is even more impactful than sleep for recovery, because sometimes when you're sleeping, you're not even really resting. You're tossing and turning, you're doing all kinds, you know, you're waking up a billion times. So your body's not really resting. In meditation, you are aware right? It's restful awareness and your body is resting. It's allowing to detoxify and let go of things in your mind and in your body that are creating toxicity. And beautiful things start to take place when your mind is completely settled, when it's not, you know, thinking way too many things and bouncing from left to right. It's, you're able to have more compassion for people and more creativity starts to flow in. You know how like sometimes you're sitting down in meditation and you have this incredible idea and you're like, where were you my whole life? Literally meditation has opened up that gate for you to receive um, those insights and access different parts of your brain so you can have those type of like life-changing ideas and creative um, creative ideas. So anyways, meditation is just wonderful. So I highly recommend um, start slow five minutes a day and then gradually build up as your body start to, starts to get comfortable with meditation. It's going to want more. So if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I have no time to meditate. You're feeling a lot of resistance. Meditate anyway, but start slow, right? You want to be able to be realistic and you want to make it a habit. And so starting slow is a really great way for you to start building a healthy relationship with meditating and not thinking, I got to sit here for 20 minutes and not think anything. And if I can't do it, then why even bother meditating? The rewards are incredible with a consistent, keyword consistent meditation practice. The reason that, that I wanted to include the last wellness tip of the day is because I really want to encourage people to walk more. And this is such a great way for us to exercise and show some love to our body without feeling the pressure of having to work out, which honestly, I love working out, but I didn't always love working out. It used to feel like a burden or like, oh my gosh, something I gotta do. But working out for me has transformed 
transformed my life because it got me out of a really dark place in my life. It retrained my mentality and it gave me so much self-confidence. So when working out becomes basically the thing that saves you, one F, you know, because I can't give that. I, I got to give God the credit. But when working out becomes one of the most important elements for your emotional, mental well-being, you become in love with it because you see yourself in a whole different way. I mean, not only are you are you building muscle, mobility, strength, you're also building mental strength, mental confidence, right? Because if you see what you can do, when you want to give up, when you want to quit in the middle of a workout and you push through, that carries on through every other thing that you do in your life. So when things get hard in real life and you want to quit, you don't quit because you know that you push through hard things and you could do hard things and doing hard, complicated things is okay. So you are also retraining your mind to not go into the things that are easy. Summer is here and one of the biggest things with my community with you guys is our hot girl walk. If you follow me on Sweet Soul and on our YouTube channel and on um, Instagram, you know I'm talking all about my hot girl walk. Why? Because it's one of the best way for us to enjoy summer and get outdoors and improve muscle strength, improve our heart condition, cardiovascular health, and improve our mental health all in one. And we're also reconnecting with nature all in one. As you can see, all of these have a lot to do with nature. Basically, nature is our health, right? So we're walking outdoors. And I gave all of us a challenge of doing 10,000 steps a day. So, you know, I like the app steps because I just like to see how many steps I'm taking in real time. And for some reason, my my Apple Watch does not really track every single step. So I like using the app step to, it's a free app where it just tells me all the steps that I'm taking, right? So get yourself a little app, go outside, set a limit of 10,000 steps because we're also challenging ourselves, right? And if you want to challenge yourself, take it up another 1,000 after a week and then take it up another 1,000 after that week. We're also in our growth season for the rest of our lives. So I need all of us to sign up for develop, developing a new skill, learning something new. I don't care what it is. If whatever you're interested in, I need you to sign up to learn more about it. And then when you go on your hot girl walk, listen to the audiobook, listen to that podcast, listen to that course, and we're staying committed to the process here. So this is why I love walking outdoors because I put on my courses and at the same time, I'm getting educated and I'm getting my fitness on and I'm getting some fresh air and I'm getting my mental health right and I'm connecting with nature and I'm feeling confident, I'm feeling good, all of that from our hot girl challenge. Now, before summer finishes, we should all go, if you live in California, let's go on a free hot girl walk. Like, let's all of us get together and do 13, 15,000 steps. Like, let's kick it up a notch. But anyways, I highly encourage you guys, go outdoors, set a goal for yourself walking. If you're feeling like maybe you're um, a little bit overweight and it's causing some pressure in your organs, your bones, Walking is one of the best ways to snatch that waste, to burn off that ex excess fat that might be bothering you if it's bothering you. You know, um, you're building like, oh my gosh, there's this lady, one of my neighbors. She must be like in her 80s. She's my biggest inspiration. She is my biggest inspiration, guys, because she walks every single day of her life. I literally wake up and sometimes it's seven in the morning and I'm opening up the blinds and she's out there like getting her walk on and I'm like, this is why she lives alone in her 80s, is independent, drives a car, and is able to walk freely and do everything because she walks every single day without a beat in the morning, rain or shine. She is out there walking and I'm like, girl, Dulce, you're in your 30s. You have no excuse. Get your ass up go outside and get that walk in. So she's my biggest inspiration, guys. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, you guys know what to do with your walks. I don't really need to go into it, but aim for 30 minutes at least. Or if you're you know, not able to go on a daily walk, just park really far and walk to the store, walk to your job, walk, just walk, guys, okay? And then let me know how this all goes for you. 
And with that being said, I hope you guys implement one, two, three, four, or five, or all of them or more, guys, into your daily routine. I know it's going to help you out tremendously because honestly, these lifestyle changes have made the biggest impact in my life. And I hope they do the same for you. So with that being said, have a blessed and beautiful day, my beautiful people. Don't forget about our, re don't forget about our retreat. I'm talking a little too fast. Happening in Bali, Indonesia. Here we come. Beautiful spiritual experience. And so sign up. Get that ticket. Join us in paradise. It's going to be incredibly magical. And I can't wait for us to be taking pictures and being in Bali and doing all the things, guys. So with that being said, have a blessed and beautiful day and I will see you in our next episode.